you found the best tutorial on how to add Google Play services to your Godot mobile game. So let's get started. The first thing that you need to do is download these two files which will be available in the description of this video and then go over to play game services and then you want to click configuration and then click on create new play game services project. Now if you already have a cloud project you can select it but in this case we're going to create a new one. I'm going to call this best app. Okay, so once that's done, go back to our Google Console page, click done. If it doesn't show, you're gonna have to refresh the page a couple of times. Here we go. Click use. Okay, once that's done, we're going to need to do all of these instructions. So the first thing they're going to have to do is OAuth. OAuth is the Google Play Services menu that is going to show on your mobile device. So let's go ahead to Google Cloud Platform and then here are two user types in this case we're going to select external and why do you want to select external because this is for complex testing normally big companies use this but since i bet you guys are small companies click on external and then click create and then you need to fill all of this this is my developer email and then you can also see how the info is going to be presented to users here if you're going to release your app on the Google Play Store, then need to fill all of this. But since we're just going to test it using a debug app, we don't need to fill this in. Next, what are scopes? Scopes are the permissions that you request to users. So basically, it's just the permissions that the users can select so that the developer can use those permissions to provide achievements, leaderboard, cloud in this case you only need to select the following so let's go ahead and click on 50 to show all of the permissions you only need to click on this out cloud platform this is so that we can save and load if you go down you also need to click here google play services this is so that we can allow the user to view to view his leaderboard achievements and saved games so click on update and then click on save and continue okay test users these are the users that are going to be able to test your game and to be able to view the google play services window while it's on testing mode you only need to do this if you're going to test your app but if you're going to release your app then don't worry about this but in our case we're going to test it i'm going to add my personal email okay save and continue okay once that's done back to dashboard okay now let's go back to our google play console and click confirm configuration next thing is create credentials so go ahead and click here on add credential a credential is a way for google to verify what platform the user that download your game is using in this case we're going to select android and what is anti-piracy this is just a way so that it prevent users who haven't installed our game from google play to access play game services let's go ahead and click create our OAuth client. Now, why do you need to create OAuth client? Because we need a client for debug testing and another client for release. So let's go ahead and click on create OAuth client. Let's go click on Android, Android client. We're going to call this debug client. Remember, credential is a way for Google to identify what platform the user is using. So we need to create one for debugging and another one for an official release. So package name. So we, let's go ahead to our project. So let's go ahead back and space this in. And SHA-1 certificate fingerprint. Okay, so this is where stuff is going to get interesting. SHA-1 is basically this certificate. So that this is just a way for Google to know that you're not messing around with the services. To be able to get the SHA-1 certificate fingerprint, you need to copy this. And then you need to go to your key stores folder or wherever your key store that you're going to use going to be member you're going to create a client for debugging and another client for official releases in this case we're going to first create one for the debug client so you're going to write cmd and then you're going to paste debug.keystore enter and then the password is always android copy this go back here 
so let's paste this in you only need to click this if you release your app on google play so let's click on create now let's click on create credentials again and all of client android now we're going to do one for official releases i'm gonna call this release client okay so let's go ahead and copy this command go back to our key source folder write cmd paste this is the key store that i use for released apps let's go ahead and click enter whenever you're using a official key store you need to put your own password in this case my password is different than android copy let's go back paste this the reason why i'm not gonna click on verify ownership yet is because it still didn't release the app on google play so but if you release it on google play store then you need to click on verify ownership create okay so as you can see we have a release client and a debug client so let's go ahead to our google play console and then click none then let's select all our clients remember we're just going to test our app so we're going to select debug client and let's save changes okay, let's go back so to do this we're going to have to set up the plugin just go ahead to our good old project first install android boot template and let's go ahead to assets and import and select the plugin that i told you to download and then click on install and click on ok and once that's done we need to go ahead to our project project settings enable this and then go to project export enable gradle boot let's close let's go ahead to our project folder let's go to android boot and open android manifest go down remember those two files that i told you to download well one of those is the guide and inside the guide there's going to be these lines that you're going to need to copy it's just above application save go to android boot press values and then strings and then in here going to have to substitute this with our project id but how do you get the project id well it's very easy just go back to google play console and scroll down and then here you're going to find your project id go ahead and copy that and save those this now head to our google project now we're going to use a node that is provided with the plugin just go ahead to add-ons and let's go ahead to google play services move this to here let me explain what is this so these are buttons and each is going to be used to do something with the google play services okay so in this case we're going to save and load data so if you want to know our functions google the node provides you can click on the node script and here you'll be able to see all the functions that you can use but in this case we're just going to save and load data so let's go back to our main script now as you can see i already set it up so i'm just going to take away the comments and so basically what does this do this just saves the data but the data has to be saved in a dictionary variable and then what does this do this loads the data so let's go ahead to our nodes and you can see all the signals that can be called so in this case we're going to use the load success why do you need to connect this because if the save data was successfully loaded this signal is going to be called and we're going to use this variable to replace the this labels text which is right here and before we export it we need to make sure to go to testers and make sure to add the email they're going to use to log into google play services in your mobile game so let's go ahead and export it Okay, so we can sign in and then you can click save data and you can click load data and as you can see it has successfully loaded the data